Hi guys, Dane here, and welcome to the latest instalment of my bookshelf tour. I don't know what number we're on, but I'm getting near the end now, so I'm actually going to batch film a bunch of these, so I can finish filming them, get them all edited, and then, like, I put the lists of the books that are mentioned, it goes into my memoir, which is about my life in books. I've mentioned this before. So without further ado, I'm going to go and get today's books. Alright, so we're starting off with a minor admission of, of guilt, because in the last one of these, I went through my J.K. Rowling books and I accidentally missed off the Tales of Beedle the Bard. So I also have that. I'm sure you just were finding it difficult to live without closure on that. Here we have Jeff Russell, The Beatles Album File and Complete Discography. Uh, this was a Christmas gift years ago from my mum. And um, it, I actually read all the way through it because I'm that kind of person. And it basically goes into all of their different albums and covers like which versions of each of the Beatles songs were used in the final version, uh, any stories behind the recording, all of that kind of stuff. And it's quite interesting, but I would suggest like don't read it from cover to cover like I did. Okay, here we have R.A. Salvatore, uh, who's a fairly well-known fantasy author. I'm mainly known for this trilogy, which is the Spear Wielders trilogy, which is uh, Dragon Slayer's Return, The Dragon's Dagger, and The Woods Out Back. And uh, basically, these are about a guy called Gary Leager, who uh, is an American, he works in a factory, and he finds this like portal through to this fantasy world uh, in The Woods Out Back, in the uh, first book. And kind of becomes a reluctant hero and has to save this fantasy realm. And uh, yeah, I used to love them. Great, just escapers and fantasy. Here we have Ben Sanders, Robert Michaels, The Demon in the Trees. You may be familiar with Ben Sanders because he has a booktube channel and very good it is too. Although I don't think he's been uh, uploading as much recently as he used to, which is a shame. Uh, this book is actually very similar to Todd's book as well. It's basically... Uh, about a creature, a demon in the trees, and Robert Michaels has to track him down uh, and and stop him. So yeah, cool cover as well. Here we have Kurt Cobain by Christopher Sanford. This is a biography of Kurt Cobain. It's kind of one of the definitive ones, really. I suppose partly because of when it was published. I mean, I was, yeah, what was it Sanford? Yeah, he's. Uh, He's been a sports journalist. This edition was published in 1995 and it first came out in 1996. So, one of the earlier Kurt Cobain biographies. Here we have Stumptown by Greg Rucker and Matthew Southworth. I should actually mention this to my other half, actually, because she loves uh, graphic novels. And, uh, you know, this is a pretty good one from what I remember. I'm going to read you the blurb. Uh, Dex Perios is the proprietor of Stumptown Investigations and a fairly talented PI. Unfortunately, she's less adept at throwing dice than solving cases. Her recent streak has left her beyond broke. She's into the confederated tribes of the Wind Coast for 18 large. But maybe Dex's luck is about to change. Sue Lin, head of the Wind Coast casino operation, will clear Dex's debt if she can locate Sue Lin's missing granddaughter. But if this, but is this job Dex's way out of the hole or a shove down one much deeper? And uh, yeah, it's like this kind of noir detective thing, a pretty cool illustration style as well. So yeah. All right, then we have Holes by Louis Sackar. I actually did a review on this recently, I believe, so I'll link to that below. Uh, excellent book. It's basically it's got a few different sort of stories within it that uh, that kind of overlap each other because it digs back into the past. But well, the main story is about this kid called Stanley Yelnats and uh, Yelnats is Stanley spelled backwards and he ends up being sent to this like youth camp where troubled youths are forced to dig holes every day and uh, throughout the, the story we find out why that is. It's a short book but it packs a powerful punch and definitely recommended. Here we have Inferior by Angela Saini. This is an uncorrected proof and this is basically about how science has underrepresented women. So for example, in scientific studies, quite often they just use males because not only with women they can't use pregnant women, but there's also the risk that a woman might be pregnant, not realise it, complications might arise, and then, you know, she might then sue the clinical trial. So they just use men because it's deemed safer, you know? But then because of this, we have drug tests that are tested on men, and then when they actually go out into the real world and women use them, they have dramatically different effects, you know? And also just, I think, a lot of... Even things like psychology and stuff like that, all the different branches of science have definitely underrepresented women. And this is the book to go to, go to if you want to find out how. 
Here we have it, James Salon, Leaving Dirty Jersey. This is a crystal meth memoir. I just like drug books. This one was actually pretty good as well. I, I might as well read this, read this blurb to you. So, Leaving Dirty Jersey is an utterly compelling tale of a middle-class teenager's descent into addiction. After being busted for possession of coke, ecstasy, and heroin, James Salon accepted a one-way ticket to a year-long drug program in California. But just a few weeks into rehab, James disappeared into the criminal underbelly of Riverside CA and the world of crystal meth. His unforgettable story opens up a psychotic world of petty criminals, troubled prostitutes, unreliable friends, paranoid dealers and easy killers, where the only real truth is your next shot of meth. Really good, really good if you're uh, into drug books, like I say. Here we have The Catcher in the Rye by J.D. Salinger. I don't need to say too much about this one because it's obviously, you know, a modern classic, if not just a classic by now. I'm trying to see if it, it's just a penguin fiction. The original American text here, and uh, well, let's see when this edition was published. Simultaneously published in 1994, so this was probably one, it's probably not my original copy of it, because I would have got that in about 2000, something like that. I would have been about 15, 16, kind of the perfect age for it. I thought it was okay. Uh, I'm not really a lover or a hater of The Catcher in the Rye, but I do appreciate its significance, so... Here we have the Valley Press Anthology of Yorkshire Poetry. This is edited by Miles Salter and Oz Hardwick. I actually met Miles Salter, and um, I don't know whether... This was one I think I was sent this after winning a competition. Uh, a, a Twitter competition on World Poetry Day where they asked people to tweet in their poems, and I tweeted one of mine, won a bunch of books, which is very cool. But uh, also, I've... Like I say, I've met Miles Soldier and actually a few of the different poets in here as well when I was at uh, York Literary Festival. Here we have Kate Santon, Tutankhamun, The Treasures of the Golden King. And this is just one that I read because hey, because um, me and my mum were just both sort of fascinated by ancient Egyptian history and culture and mythology and all that kind of stuff. So whenever I see a new interesting looking book about, about uh, Tutankhamun or ancient Egypt in general, I try and pick it up. Okay, next up we have uh, The Last Wish by Andrei Shevkowski. And this is, I believe, the first Witcher book. There's something to do with the order they're published and the order you read them in are different. But this is the first one that people generally say you should read. It's a collection of short stories. And to begin with, I wasn't a fan of this and I didn't really like it. I didn't like how... Because a lot of, sorry, I had some fluff in my mouth. Because a lot of the um, the legend and lore were kind of unique to the Witcher world or based on Polish mythology, which I'm not super familiar with, I couldn't picture what a lot of the monsters and stuff looked like. But as I got further in, I started to really enjoy it. I like the questions that it asks about morality as well and the kind of the complex characters in it. And I probably will read some more Sapkowski at a later date. Hey, Google. Pause. Three, two, one, go. All right, let's continue. We're a bit floppy here for some reason. All right, it's a little bit later, but why not? Let's continue with the bookshelf tour. So here we have Bushra Sapked, The Sender. And Bushra, I think, was 13 or 14. She was in grade 10. Uh, and she asked me if she could send me a copy of her book. And I think I actually might have bought it um, just to show a little bit of support. And it wasn't bad for, you know, a girl of her age. It was on par with a lot of the self-published stuff that I've read, to be honest. It was all right. Uh, I'll read you the blurb. Jennifer Storms, a young teenage girl, lives her normal life happily in London until one day she starts receiving weird emails from a sender termed unknown. She doesn't bother about it at first, but when things start getting serious as brutal murders take place in the city, she, along with her friends, sets off to investigate about the killer. Will she be able to solve this murder mystery and unleash the secret of The Sender? Here we have Promote Yourself by Dan Shawbell. This is subtitled The New Rules for Building an Outstanding Career. It's just another one of these sort of businessy non-fiction books. It is actually one of the better ones uh, in the... Um, at least it stands out to me, so there's that. Speaking of the marketing books that stand out to me, we have two here by David Meerman Scott. So we have Marketing Lessons from the Grateful Dead, What Every Business Can Learn from the Most Iconic Band in History. And this was just fascinating, to be honest, because you do learn about the Grateful Dead in it as well. And that's also co-written with uh, Brian Halligan, who's the CEO of HubSpot, and they're both like big Grateful Dead fans. And then here are The New Rules of Marketing and PR by David Mim and Scott. How to use social media, online video, mobile applications, blogs, news releases and viral marketing to reach buyers directly. And I would say Scott is one of the forerunners of that whole industry. You know, he's one of the, the first people who really got known for being an expert 
for talking about social media marketing. And funnily enough, he's David Meerman Scott for SEO purposes. So there's an astronaut called David Scott. So if he just used the name David Scott every time you search for him, you'd get loads of hits about the astronaut. So he uses Meerman, which is his middle name, to differentiate himself. And actually, fun, uh, funnily enough as well, I was watching a, a space documentary. I think it was called Space Dealers on Netflix about people who were like buying and selling various bits of space memorabilia. And he popped up on there because he, he owned something that was owned by David Scott. So that was kind of cool. Here we have Kim Scott, Radical Candor, How to Get What You Want by Saying What You Mean. This is one of the first sort of non-fiction businessy books that I got paid to review uh, for a client of mine, basically. It's more of a spark note summary, I guess. So I kind of go through the book and summarize the chapters and write 2,000 word pieces on it. And finally, here we have Manda Scott, The Crystal Skull, The End of the World Starts Now. And this was all based on the old legend that the world was going to end on the 21st of December 2012, because that's when the Mayan calendar runs out, even though it just means that there would have been a new Mayan calendar. But uh, it is meant to be the end of like an age, to be fair. But uh, these days, everything's the end of like an end of an era. I mean, you know, the Internet in my lifetime has revolution ever, rev revolutionized everything. So... So, but uh, yeah, yeah, pretty good book. I mean, it's in the vein of like Dan Brown, Da Vinci Code and all that kind of stuff, but with this Mayan legend as well. I did read it before 2012, so it was probably more impactful then when people actually were losing their shit. But yeah, it is it is what it is. So yeah, that's it for this bookshelf tour. This one's quite a short and sweet one because basically I do like a shelf at a time and the last tour we kind of did part of the shelf with my JK Rowling books. But I'll be back soon for my next one where we'll continue with the S's. So as always, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit subscribe for more. Let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books. And I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.